Hey friends, we are new here. I'm Pastor Goodman and this is Pastor Richard. We're talking about uh, the small catechism. Where are we at right now, buddy? Uh, looks like we're at seven and eight, right? Commandment seven it. and eight. So the seventh commandment, thou shalt not steal. Um, I, I remember sort of looking at these and I, I like it that, that the rules actually say more about the giver than the person who's probably not following them. God actually cares about your stuff. He, he wants you to have the stuff that he has given you so much so that he says nobody's allowed to come along and take it, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, and we, we've hit this before in previous previous episodes about this high idea that uh, God longs to protect these good gifts that he gives to us. And so just mm-hmm. to real quickly, not to not to repeat it too much, but God gives us the gift of authority in the fourth commandment, the gift of life in the fifth commandment, the gift of marriage in the sixth commandment, uh, the gift of property, the gift of a good reputation, the gift of contentment. These are all wonderful gifts that he longs for us to have. And so he puts these protective fences around to protect us from ruining it. And, and uh, I've always used this illustration. Your sinful nature is kind of like that kid on the beach who wants to come along to that sandcastle and just destroy the sandcastle. <laughs> uh, and, you know, all of us have that within us. You know, you see this beautiful sandcastle and you just, there's a part of you that just wants to kick it over and knock it down or like a, 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 a house of cards. You just want to pull that out and knock it down. And that's, tragically, that's our sinful nature. It just wants to come and destroy these things. And God longs to protect these gifts for us uh, that he gives to us, that he lays these fences out to show that thou shall not do these things. It, it flies in the face of a God who only cares about getting you to heaven. Um, he, we have a God who cares about this creation today. We have a God who, who is worried about you today, not just to save you one day, but, but to actually lead you now in a life that, that is better, that, is, that, is, that hurts less because sin breaks stuff, but also a God then who, who would even start to guard, well, um, how, you would, how you would be perceived as well, right? Yeah, I mean that that's the thing of a gift of a good reputation and and man to have a good reputation we sometimes don't think about that but for people to think well of you and and to put the best construction on you is is huge. I mean that that impacts everything from job interviews uh to to uh connecting and even in a church how people approach you. Uh if you have a bad reputation uh which we call character assassination that can happen. Mm-hmm. In fact, you know, I've often taken uh the understanding of the 8th commandment which is uh uh, that false testimony, which can go the way of slandering another person, uh, tie that back to the fifth commandment, which is thou shall not murder. And so when we murder, we actually take a person's physical life. We destroy their physical life. Uh, in the eighth commandment, we can also murder their reputation by destroying the reputation. And, and God longs for us to not only have the gift of property, uh, the gift of life, but the gift of a good reputation of those putting the absolute best construction on us as possible. I mean, let's face it, we, we, we all are in this world of sin and struggles and uh, life is complex. Uh, There's oftentimes many different components to the decisions that we make. And even though when we make bad decisions at many times, there's, there's oftentimes there's a best construction of why we did that. And that's where we have the eighth commandment is to put the utmost best construction on each other. uh, Understanding that we're sinners, uh, sin, that sin and struggle by, by, by the sinful nature that we have, but also sinners redeemed in Jesus and that uh, little bit of compassion uh, can go a long way in that Eighth Commandment. I really love the way that you're pushing this all the way through to a 10, because this is about loving your neighbor. And so it's not just about not ruining your neighbor's stuff or not ruining your neighbor's reputation, but it's actually, there, there's a complexity to this that goes far beyond don't gossip. Um, you, you recognize the damage that can be done there, absolutely, because you, you tied it to the Fifth Commandment. And you recognize, like, I, I, I'm in a small town right now. Um, if you stabbed me and stole my wallet, I would heal faster than if you ruined my reputation here. I yeah. just have to move. Um, yeah. The reputation is, is, a, is a really, really precious and fragile thing. Um, and it's something that we, we love to go to because it's so easy to do. Um, that, that like it, This is actually one of the ways that sinners, like you said, when we're looking at that sandcastle, if we, if we really want justice in the world um, it, and, and we're not seeing it the way we want, it's easy to, to, to ruin people's reputations too. If, if the, the powers that be won't come along and get them in trouble, I'm at least going to make sure that everybody knows who they really are. And I'm going to say these things. And it stops being about whether or not they're true or false even. But like you said, this is actually, are you doing your neighbor's character good or are you doing it evil? So when, when Luther talks about this, he doesn't just say, don't gossip or even just don't, don't say it if it's not true, but we should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him or hurt his reputation, but defend him, speak well of him and explain everything in the kindest way. That doesn't mean that we, we say that their sin is a good sin. That doesn't mean that we, we make wrongs into rights, but it means that we're actually willing to, to talk about them as if Jesus died for them and as if they're worth defending, as if Jesus were to defend them from the cross. 
Well, and I think you bring up a good point when it comes to the Eighth Commandment. I think we have two two opposite errors on that. On the one side, uh, we, 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 we go down the road where we absolutely slander and destroy a person's reputation, and, and that's that's sinful. It's wrong. The opposite end is where we put and honey coat everything and we sugarcoat it to the point where uh, if there's a, if there's an open sin, a public sin, we 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 put it, you know we stuff it stuff it under the rug. We put our head in the sand. We don't look at it, and that's neither is is healthy. Uh, in other words, but we can look at a person that's maybe uh, morally failing, and we can acknowledge the moral failure, but then we put the best construction on it as possible, and then we have a sense of compassion, which goes back to. All the scriptures, when a, when, a, when a brother is sinning, you who are spiritual, restore him gently uh, with compassion, taking the plank out of your own eye, uh, knowing that uh, we too are just as susceptible to those sins that we see in our neighbors, uh, if not more. And so that we approach each other with compassion, uh, integrity in Christ and the forgiveness of sins. Uh, it's, it's all together. You know, there's another aspect. It's kind of fun when we talk about this, you know, the eighth commandment can kind of bounce back to the fifth commandment and they kind of all intertwine. Yeah. I, I, you know, maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves, but the, the idea of coveting, which is ninth and 10th commandment. Uh, I've always heard that, that when we covet, coveting is when our eyes grow hands. Uh, I've heard it hmm. said before. And I love that phrase and I can't recall who I heard it from, but we start hmm. coveting our neighbor's stuff and things. And then that leads us to what? Then get jealous and then we slander them with our mouth. And so coveting is the eyes, slander is the mouth and stealing is the hands, right? So you look at all of our senses are being involved in these 10 commandments. So we sin with our eyes through coveting. We sin with our mouths through the eighth commandment of false testimony. We sin with our hands uh, with respect to uh, stealing. And also we, we we sin with our whole body when we what use our force of our body to what murder. And so right. we see how these wonderful gifts of, of our sight and smell and ears to receive good gifts and to cherish these good gifts that God gives us and to 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 serve our neighbor uh, with these senses, then how these senses can be perverted by our sinful nature uh, to exploit and hurt our neighbor and also hurt ourselves. And so I love thinking of all these kind of as a, as a chain together in a lot of ways. They are. They can't just be taken apart. And it's, it's so important to, to go to where you even went to with coveting, that, that sin always starts in the heart and eventually it, it reaches outward. So so then when we talk about the law, it's not simply just, are you behaving outwardly? It, it's what is your inward condition? And when we talk about sin, then we don't talk about it simply as an action. Sin is is a condition of the heart that is set against these things. And and it does this awful thing is we, we talked about the, the fulfillment of the, the seventh and eighth commandments in such beautifully simple ways. But there's very complex doings at the same time. So there, there, there's nuances to how we can observe the Eighth Commandment. But it, you're right, at the core, it's just compassion. Um, and what we do as sinners is we always flip that around. And we make the, the complexities of the Eighth Commandment very, very simple. And we say, well, I didn't gossip. So like, if it's true, I can say it. And then when we take uh, the, the idea of compassion, which should be so, so simple, we, we, make that, we make that complex. And we say, well, like, yeah, I know that we're supposed to love everybody, but they had this coming. Um, we, we always flip the things that God would give on their heads in sin. And um, when we're given this last bit of co commandment with with uh, coveting, uh, it, it is just a reminder: start start here in your heart, not simply not simply in your hands. Yeah, yeah. And and as we we take an honest look at the Ten Commandments, uh, we realize that we not only fail in our deeds, but as we confess on Sundays, we we fail in our thoughts, and then we fail in our words, which encompasses all of us. And so. So on the one hand, we can say these Ten Commandments are good and true, and we, we, we uphold them. We say these are wonderful. These are God's will for us. Uh, th this is this is the God, how he would seek things to be for us. Um, so we say it's good. And also these Ten Commandments help curb uh, the sinful nature in us and society. And then these Ten Commandments, they show us, man, we look at them, we're like, man, I, I, I fall short. Yeah. And then God be praised that the law is there to show us that. But then there's another word, and that's the gospel that mm -hmm. we are forgiven in Jesus, which, I mean, that brings us down to the Apostles' Creed and so forth. Yeah, well, we'll dive into there next. Awesome.